Let me show you something. Kind of see where I'm going with this? Oh, one more thing, uh, it's fermentation Friday. one of my most requested videos of all time, period. Ever since I did the Ultimate Sourdough Guide, people have been requesting the advanced version. This isn't necessarily about the ingredients or the recipe. Well, I mean, it has something to do with the ingredients, but don't expect like some sort of like special flour because that's not the secret to really good bread. It's technique. But with all that said, let's make this, shall we? Bone soiree, brothers. I gotta interrupt you really quick. Um, I got teamed up with somebody to do merch and do aprons, so that's that's good. I'm very excited about that, but I need to know what you guys want. Comment below, let me know what you wanna see on that apron. All right, so we've arrived. I'm gonna assume you already have prior knowledge about sourdough, so we're just gonna jump right in. Now first we're gonna start our levin. Before anybody asks, the scheduling for everything will be in the description. So timing is gonna be up to you, but I usually start around eight in the morning. So in a clean jar, you're gonna add 35 grams of mature sourdough starter, 35 grams of all-purpose flour, 35 grams of whole wheat flour, and 70 grams of room temperature filtered water. Mix all that together, place a cap on it, use at least a pint-sized jar, place a loose fitting lid on it, then ferment at 78 degrees Fahrenheit or 25 degrees Celsius for five to six hours. Guys, if you wanna play the advanced game, you really need to get that temperature control well under control. Make sure that you're using some sort of bread proofer or something. I'm using the Broad and Taylor bread proofer. This is not a paid promo, by the way. I'm just genuinely using this. Now, three and a half hours into your levan, you're going to want to mix your flour and water for your autolise. So in a largest bowl, mix together 804 grams of nice bread flour and 75 grams of whole wheat flour. Mix that together by hand, you know, get your hands in there. Don't be afraid to get dirty. Okay, so now you're gonna measure out 740 grams of filtered water. Of that water, just separate out 80 grams of that and place it in a small bowl and place it at the side. You'll need that later for the mix. With the remaining water, just heat that to 90 degrees Fahrenheit or 32 degrees Celsius. Pour that into your flour mix and mix that just until everything's hydrated. Do not overmix. Cover with a damp towel or plastic wrap and then let that rest in the same area as your levan for the remaining time that the levan has, which should be around one and a half hours. You can tell when the levan is done because the top is flat and it's just beginning to fall. Now we're gonna mix. So literally pour your levan directly onto your dough, which is auto least for an hour and a half. And then using some of that reserved 80 grams of water on the side, you're just gonna use your hands to spread that out, dimple it into the dough. And then I like to pour a little tiny splash of it, not all of it, but a little tiny splash of that remaining water in there and then mix the dough together by hand. Good for the biceps, you know? Once that starts to integrate a little bit, I like to use the rhubarb method to help incorporate it better which is basically just scooping and then slapping the dough back down. Once it's pretty decently incorporated, which should only take about 30 seconds to a minute, dump that dough out onto a work surface, no flour, and we're gonna slap and fold. Now, this is gonna take some practice if you've never done it before, especially with a dough that's hydrated. Facing the dough, you're gonna pick the dough up using your fingers. It's gonna stick pretty bad. You're gonna pick it up and then you're gonna slap it back down and then fold it over itself pick it up and then slap it back down and then fold it over itself. It's gonna be really difficult to handle at first, but as you do this more, it'll start to come together. It won't stick as bad and then you'll start to kind of get a flow going. That'll take about three to five minutes. Now, once the dough becomes smooth and it's not sticking so bad anymore, you can then transfer it back to your bowl, cover it again, place it back at the 78 degrees Fahrenheit and let it sit for 25 minutes. After the 25 minutes, you can pull the dough back out, sprinkle 18 grams of fine sea salt over the top, add the rest of your water that was kept to the side, mix it the same way as before, and then perform another set of slap and fold for about two to three minutes or until smooth and it begins to catch some air. Place it back in your bowl, cover it, and then place it back in your warm environment. Now it's rise, aka bulk ferment, is gonna be four and a half hours. During that, you're gonna perform six total folds. After letting your dough rest for 15 minutes, grab the dough and stretch it up as far as it'll extend without tearing, fold it over itself, and repeat that all around the perimeter of the dough. That is one set of fold. Place it back in the warm environment and rest for 15 minutes. Repeat that two more times, so a grand total of three 15 minute interval folds. Then let it rest for 30 minutes. After that 30 minutes is up, perform another set of folds and repeat that two more times. So you're going to have a grand total of three 15-minute interval folds and three 30-minute interval folds. Then just let it rest in that warm environment for the remainder of the bulk ferment, which, by the way, you should be placing it back in that environment every time you do a fold, which should be about two to two and a half hours. 
Just as a note, every time this dough is resting, it should be sitting at that 78 degree Fahrenheit temperature. Once you've finished the remainder of your bulk ferment, your dough should have risen about 85% grand total. Gently dump that out onto an unfloured work surface. I like to sprinkle a little line to show how to splint it in half. I usually eyeball it, to be honest with you. Using a dampened bench scraper and dampened hands, carefully split the dough in half, and then pre-shape each dough into a light bool. Again, this is a pre-shape. Don't make it too tight, all right? You don't need them tight bools. Now let those loose bools rest for 20 minutes uncovered. Now we're going to discuss the coveted tartine shoelace shaping method. So first flour the top of your bowl, okay? Very gently, make sure that it's totally coated in flour though. Then loosen the bottom with a bench scraper and gently flip it over, being really careful not to degas it. All right, I'm gonna slow this clip down. So first fold the bottom up to the center and then stretch and fold the left side three quarters over to the right and then fold the right side over the left side and then stretch and fold the top part up and over down to the center. Now, we're gonna carefully grab each side, sort of a segment of dough, and stretch and fold it over itself, sort of like a shoelace pattern, and repeat that on the top, the middle, and then the bottom. Then carefully fold and roll itself from the bottom to the top, and gently, lightly seal it on the bottom. You know, I like to create a little bit of tension with my bench scraper there, you don't have to do that. Then, that's, that's it, that's the shaping method. Lightly flour a nine and a half inch oval banneton with rice flour, and then gently and carefully place your dough into the floured banneton, with the seam side facing up and the smooth side facing down in the banneton. Repeat that with the other dough, place it in its banneton and all that jazz, you know, you, you get the whole gist. And then individually place each prepared dough into a plastic bag, close it with a rubber band so no air can really get into it, and then place it in the refrigerator to proof for 12 to 14 hours. So we're gonna do the easier oven sieving method since we already spent so much time on everything else. So you're gonna need your Lodge Combo Cooker. If you don't already have one, there'll be a link in the description. Place that bad boy in your oven and then preheat that to 500 degrees Fahrenheit or 260 degrees Celsius for one hour. I want this thing screaming hot. Once you can hear your pot screaming, that's a joke, dust the bottom of one of your proof doughs with rice flour, then dust the pan, gently dump your dough into the pan. Please be careful not to burn yourself. And using a lame, which by the way, the lame that I got is custom made by this super nice guy whose name I can't pronounce, so I actually DM'd him to tell us how to pronounce it. Uh, my first name is Ola. The small business is called Hartbrett Hontwerk. Hartbrett is my, my mom's last name. Hontwerk is the uh, means uh, handcraft. Stoked to be in a YouTube video. Though. Should really just have people send me pronunciation videos like this. Made it so much easier. Anyway, thank you, Ola. Anyways, you're gonna score your dough down the center from the top to the bottom, a little over a quarter of an inch deep at about a 45 degree angle. Put the top on and place it back in the oven. Oh yeah, great job, Autofocus. Thank you for doing your job today. Then just bake that for 20 minutes at 500 degrees Fahrenheit. Once that 20 minutes is up, bust that oven open and then take the top off your combo cooker and then reduce the oven temperature to 450 degrees Fahrenheit or 232 degrees Celsius and bake for another 20 to 30 minutes or until it reaches a nice deep brown. It's okay if there's a tiny, tiny bit of char. We want to cook this well done, aka bien cuit, which is like basically a French term for a darker colored bread. There's way more flavor this way. Get that bad boy to cool onto a wire rack, and then bake the other loaf the exact same way as before. Just make sure to reset your oven back up to 500 and give your pot a 15 minute reheat before placing your next loaf in there. And that's the whole flipping shebang. You got bread. Just make sure to let it cool down on a wire rack until it's room temperature, please. Easily my favorite bread to make. It don't need anything extra. It's fine on its own, but a little bit of butter and flaky salt, it's pretty nice too. But do you want to know what else is nice with a little bit of butter and flaky salt? B-roll. guys and that is it so homemade sourdough bread the advanced method again you could see that it's more about technique one more big thing i gotta say yes sir yes sir yes sir yes sir yes sir, yes, sir. Yes. we won sever's best food video reader's choice that is because of you the only reason that we won that is because you guys voted for me and uh, well, I don't even know where to begin. And the sheer amount of votes that we got was extremely flattering. I'm very, very grateful. You guys know this, I've said it a million times. Funny thing is I actually didn't go to the award ceremony because I'm an asshole and also because I didn't know if I was gonna win. The award's coming in the mail, it'll come soon. When it gets here, I will show you, you will see it, we will experience it together. So with all that said, if you enjoyed this video or you learned something, leave a like, subscribe, and I will see you next time.